with most investors going about life, investing, and retirement planning as if nothing unusual has happened to our financial system, not realizing the repercussions of the 11 trillion that's been pumped into the US financial system in the past 18 months alone. I just want to share with you a report we have just put out. At least four billionaires have stated publicly that Americans aren't paying enough attention to this development. And now a former Goldman Sachs banker says sooner than most people think, millions of Americans will potentially be pushed down out of the middle class, out of private retirement, and out of a decent life based on independence and privacy into a collectivist nightmare he calls financial lockdown. So find out how to protect yourself, your money, and your family with a free copy of his new report. In it, he'll show you the four steps he recommends that you take immediately. So if you'd like a free copy of the report, you simply have to go to 2022wakeupcall.com. Again, that's 2022wakeupcall.com. Hi, this is Daniela Cambon, and welcome back to Stansberry Research. Earlier this week, President Joe Biden signed an executive order asking the government to examine the risks and benefits of cryptocurrencies. Here to help us connect the dots of everything happening is Willem Middlecope. He's the author of The Big Reset, and we always have a great conversation. Willem, uh, good to see you again. Yeah, I think that's the, that was buried almost in this executive order. Of course, everybody was looking for... Uh, what will be the news on, on Bitcoin, on crypto, uh, and and then we found this uh, well this message that uh, the digital dollar um, the U.S. will start a digital dollar project, and of course we knew this was a research project, and the U.S. always played it down that it was just a research. But I think this was, this was the first confirmation, especially from the president, that uh, the. the they will start to roll out uh, the digital dollar in the next uh, few years. But I think they need to do some testing first, but it, it will have huge uh, repercussions. So this, this, is, this is a key moment, Willem. And, and you know, if you do a little digging, uh, I, I found a speech from uh, the Fed back in, in February, end of February, just a few weeks ago, uh, where Governor Brainard said, um, you know, the Federal Reserve needs to be preparing for the payment landscape of the future even as we continue to make improvements to meet today's needs. In light of the rapid digitalization of the financial system, the Fed has been thinking critically about whether there is a role for a potential U.S. central bank digital currency. So all roads seem to be pointing to the coming digital currency. The question is, how are they going to get people's buy-in for this? Oh, well, that's quite easy. Uh, If you uh, advise people... (laughs) as a government uh, to go to the app store and uh, download the fat wallet and you tell people there will be ten dollars on the fat wallet uh, once you downloaded it everybody will jump on it and actually in ukraine we have seen something like this uh, this uh, there was the start uh, last month of an e-wallet in which the government advised people you can download this e-wallet and you can get subsidies, uh, but only if you're vaccinated. So you see this merger of, uh, well, uh, e-money, electronic money, digital money, but only if you well behave. So this reminds me on the China system where the credit score is, uh, well, is used in, in a way to uh, take away part of your freedom if you don't behave well. And this, this is what can happen now in the West as well. Does modern monetary theory have to go digital? Well, it helps. <laughs> it helps because um, you will have um, money which is highly programmable. Uh, so you can, uh, you can uh, say to people, you, you have to spend this money before the end of the year because otherwise it, will, uh, well, it won't be there on your wallet anymore. You can uh, tell people where they uh, should spend it on. So you can, can't spend it on holidays, but you can spend it on energy and food. And I think this is uh, something which uh, authorities, they they love it because they will get more control over their people and they can follow each and every payment and you you will leave traces everywhere. So in tandem, you know, with going digital is the push to get to zero net uh, emissions by, you know, 2050. Can you talk a little bit? Yes, sorry. Uh, It will all be connected uh, because 
um, they will know exactly, once we have this di fully digital payment system and we all have this e-wallet, they know exactly what you buy, they know exactly where you go, and they will, they will calculate your, your CO2 footprint. And when you, um, when you buy too many airline tickets, you will be punished in a way. And um, so it, it will all be connected. So they will tell you this is all needed to, to fight climate change. There will be the spin. But it's, it's all about control and it's all about maintaining the current uh, dollar-centered world reserve system. And of course, there's a lot, of st there's a lot at stake here. Interesting, uh, and to that point, I dug up a tweet from a UN Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, who says, uh, who early in the year uh, named his, uh, you know, the top five uh, things we should be fighting for around the world right now. Um, number one, fighting COVID. His number two, ahead of tackling climate change, was transforming the global financial system. Number two, transforming the global financial system, then tackling the climate crisis, putting people at the center of the digital world and delivering sustainable peace. But let's hone in on that transforming the global financial system. What does that involve, Willem? What well, does that mean? Um, I published the big reset in 2004, 14, sorry. And um, came to the conclusion, actually was printed on the back cover around 2020, we need to change uh, the international monetary system. We need to move it to the next phase. I call this a monetary reset. Uh, and we've seen, I, I, we've seen many signs pointing towards this monetary reset. And the example you, um, you just mentioned is very interesting because if you look into his speech, he actually said COVID-19 uh, also exposed deficiencies in the global financial system. To tackle these weaknesses and integrate the global financial system with other global priorities, think climate change, um, the UN proposes holding summits every two years, uh, summits of the 20 leading economies. So this actually tells you he wants to ha organize a new Bretton Woods conference with the leading 20 companies, uh, countries around the world. And this reminds me of the IMF, which published this new website or part of their website in October 2020, calling for a new Bretton Woods moment, but not telling us what <laughs> this was all about. And mm -hmm. it also reminded me about a speech given by uh, Janet Yellen, uh, or it might have been an interview, and the Treasury Secretary said um, we should be prepared to build a new global economy from the ground up in a new restructured world. And then we had this speech by Mark Carney in Jackson Hole in, what was it, July, August 2019. And he called for a global monetary system to replace the dollar, according to the Financial Times. And this speech is still on the website of the Bank of England. He was the governor of the Bank of England. He's retired now. And he also said, Mark Carney, there will be a change in this unsustainable monetary system. And, and I follow many of his speeches because he is on the forefront of this uh, movement. And he had another speech in 2020 in which he said the world needs a new sustainable financial system to stop runaway climate change. So we have mm. so many signs now pointing towards a monetary reset. And I think the, the current crisis we spoke about crisis in our last chat we, yeah. we mentioned 15 crises well we have a refugee refugee crisis now in the ukraine in europe we have a commodity crisis we have a food crisis we have an energy crisis and and th this will increase the pressure on the system on the financial system and will put pressure on authorities to come up with 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 a reset with another system but then you will enter into a fight between the West and the East, and then it's, it, it, it's getting scary. Let's bring it back a second, because you just said a lot of important uh, things right there. And then I'm going to get to my big question for you. Yeah. Um, what would the new Bretton Woods look like? I studied a lot of academic papers, and if you study the speeches of Mark Carney, because he's been a front runner on this, Actually, he proposed in Jackson Hole 
that the successor for the dollar should not be one currency, but should be a digital currency, a synthetic world reserve currency, he mentioned it one day. So um, you might be aware of the SDR, which is the currency basket of the IMF. In the currency basket of the IMF are five currencies now, the dollar, the euro, the pound, the yen, and renminbi. The renminbi was added in 2015. So there you have a currency basket which, which could be used as a new world reserve currency. But imagine that all these five main currencies have a digital, uh, a, a digital form. So the central bank digital currencies have been rolled out in a few years in China, Europe, in the US, uh, Japan, uh, and the UK. Then you can build a digital mm -hmm. SDR and, and, and ask everybody to download the new digital SDR wallet. And we, we might call it the Bancor. And, and you just made me think of another point because I had Jim Rogers earlier on um, this week and he was saying how the US dollar is now being used as the weapon of choice. choice. We see the financial uh, sanctions uh, you know, being used as weapons. Well, won't this force countries like Russia, China, Brazil, whatever, uh, to say, well, we don't want to rely on the U.S. dollar anymore? Oh, yeah, th this is this is the big the big problem now. And um, in the epilogue of the big reset, um, I came to the conclusion that a monetary reset could be organized and we could see a smooth transition as long as we have all major trading blocks, so from the East and the West, um, it, it come together and came to a joint conclusion. But if the East and the West don't want to walk the same road, then, then you can end up with war. And what do we see now? We have a war actually between the East and the West. Because if you look at the sanctions, uh, the sanctions are being presented here in Europe and I think also in the US that the whole world is using sanctions now to punish Russia. But let's look at the countries who are using the sanctions. It's only the West, it's only Europe, the US, Canada and Australia. That's one billion people. And all the countries from the BRIC, the BRIC countries, Brazil, um, India, China, if you look at the Middle East, they don't jo don't join us in these sanctions. And that's six billion people. So you have six billion people who don't support sanctions and you have one billion who are supporting right. well, sanctions. Well, 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 they would say because they don't hold the power, right? To well, oppose those sanctions. The, the Saudis hold a lot of power. <laughs> um, and, and what's very interesting, the Saudis didn't want to answer a call from Joe Biden this week. This was published in press reports. The Saudis said they want to diminish their investments in the US. And the Saudis are still talking with Putin, just like China and India. And remember, we once saw the video footage of the, um, the leader of Saudi Arabia high five, giving a high five to Putin during a conference. Yeah. So I can envision a scenario in which the petrodollar deal where oil is being traded in dollars to support the US, the petrodollar deal could fail. And once Saudi, Russia and China agree on a new oil trading system, then, then things get very interesting very, very rapidly. Now let's, let's connect the dots here because we started by talking about the crypto regulation landscape that's being paved here in the US, right? the move towards a digital dollar, digitization, uh, also in the fight you know, to, 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 to help fight climate change. Let's connect it to what's happening in Russia, Ukraine now. And my question to you is, is Ukraine a fast track to the reset? I think it is. And what's not being discussed that much in Western media is that from the US point of view, the Ukraine is the big price from a geopolitical point of view. And I don't know if you are aware of the Heartland theory, which was written down in 1904 by Sir John Mackinder. 
And what he, what he said, that it's so important to control Eastern Europe. Actually, he said, who rules East Europe commands the heartland. Who rules the heartland commands the world island, world island being Eurasia, the continent. And who, who rules world island rules the world, commands the world. So this Eurasian landmass, which runs from actually the Netherlands to Vladivostok, that's four or five billion people. So if, they, if, there's hap if there's peace and happiness on the Eurasian continent, that's a big risk for the US. So uh, we also have the former security advisor, Brzezinski, who was the security advisor for Jim Carter. He, he wrote a book about this, The Grand Chessboard. You can download it for free, that the PDF is online. And, and he said the US should always make sure that there is chaos in central, um, in central uh, European, um, uh, co the continent. So it, it, study the US, study the actions of the US. They invested a lot of money to have this revolution in Kiev in 2014. And, and well, I, I'm afraid that the US isn't, um, the, the Europe, Europe has the pain of this crisis again, and, and in a way, the U.S. Uh, enjoys it. Because how do they win? Like, like I um, explained in the, for, in, the, um, in the previous answer, w when there's no chaos on this Eurasian, Eurasian landmass, and when four or five billion people trade, um, when the East and the West trade and, 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 and Russia will supply the energy, we don't need the US anymore. So there's a lot, and, and you know, I, I'm, I'm not making this up. This has been written down by uh, Brzezinski. This has been written down by many um, geopolitical experts. There's a lot at stake for the US and the US, um, the U.S. wins in this um, in, in in this scenario. Uh, let's switch gears now, Willem. Let's talk about uh, the food crisis. Um, we see the price uh, of wheat. Uh, we <laughs> and let's talk about you know. Do you think that this could um, uh, lead to recession? The spiking prices that we're seeing in wheat. Yeah, we we talked about superinflation during our last chat in which I said it's not hyperinflation, we, we won't get hyperinflation, we'll get superinflation, so let's say 10% uh, inflation yearly. Well, US is almost there, we had PPI numbers from Italy, 40% PPI, 40, 40. Um, but I'm worried about um, this superinflation, but I'm worried what will happen with the lower and middle class people, especially in poor countries, they will have a food crisis. You can expect a food crisis now. Egypt just said today yeah. that they don't allow export of food anymore. Russia said the same, Ukraine. So everybody started to hoard food. Mm -hmm. This is getting very, very scary. Um, and, and it all developed within the last two weeks. So, um, Which brings me to my next point, Willem, is, you know, we have many investors and viewers watching and at the end of the day, we want to be able to protect ourselves, our loved ones. So how can we do it given the amount of uncertainty we are living in? Yeah, well, you always have this strange, um, um, you have this strange situation that what's good for yourself to, to protect you, you and your family. So, for example, uh, we didn't talk gold yet, but if you start to move out of the financial system and you buy, you flee towards hard assets, which we see happening a lot. You know, we talked with high net worth investors all day and people are really getting stressed now. And um, so w when you start to uh, start hoarding uh, gold or silver or whatever kind of hard assets, that's good for you and your family, but it, it's, it's bad for the system. And I, I'm, I'm afraid that too many actors now, whether they are individuals or company or state actors, 
they start to flee from paper assets. Actually, we've had 25 countries adding to their gold reserves in the last two years. Even Ireland, Hungary and Poland, but especially all countries, all these BRIC countries, they're all adding to their gold reserves. Why have they been accumulating physical gold in the last 10 years? We all know why, because they know we're in the end of this dollar system. Will the current situations uh, and the crisis cause the Fed to reverse course on interest rate hikes here? Guaranteed. We just had a rate announcement by the ECB today. No rate rise. Uh, and we have double digit in, uh, inflation. Uh, I told you about the PPI numbers, but they can't raise rates because we have a new crisis now. Uh, we've never had a situation where these uh, spikes in energy prices didn't lead to a uh, recession. So re recession is guaranteed now. And, and that's why central bankers, they can't raise rates. And, and they were cornered before the U mm -hmm. Ukraine war and they, they're cornered even more now. So the question is, uh, as you know, we've covered gold. <laughs> Uh, in depth in the past, we uh, do many as well. investors <laughs> yeah. asking, you know, why why isn't isn't gold higher here? We saw we went over two thousand dollars an ounce, but of course, investors want to see three thousand, four thousand, five thousand dollar gold. Uh, should gold be higher? Yeah, but we all know uh, the price being managed. Look at what happened yesterday. The paper selling was was incredible, and the paper selling yesterday was done to prevent the breakout of gold to a new all time high. Just in, uh, before the inflation numbers uh, from the US would be published. So this, this game has been uh, ongoing for quite some time, but we've seen it with palladium that the paper selling didn't work anymore a few years ago. We've seen it now with nickel. Um, look at the volatility. We had two commodities, nickel and natural gas, which showed intraday spikes and moves of 50%. Yeah. And so this can happen Please. to the precious metals one day. So would you be buying any commodities at these prices here, at these levels? Well, I think because of the, um, uh, the manipulation uh, on, on gold and silver by selling paper, uh, pay, well, by selling paper, gold and silver through futures, um, you have a uh, discount still available, especially on physical silver, but also on gold. But physical silver is the only metal which trading 50% below its 1980 level, which was $50 at that time. And, and the spike we have seen with the natural gas and nickel, they went up 10x this year, 10x. Yeah. Um, and and we, we could see that with silver. Uh, I, I expect that to happen to silver somewhere in the not too distant future. Could be this year, next year. But before 2030, we see silver with three digits, not two digits. So, so gold, silver still buys for you here. Yeah, but I, I also advise people, well, I'm not allowed to advise because we have a permit to run a fund. Uh, but I always tell them I'm buying uh, gold, silver, Bitcoin. Uh, and for the fund, we, we yeah. invest a lot in uranium as well and in base metals. And the whole commodity spectrum will do very well. And you know, we come from a large downturn and a large bear market. And if you look at the ratios, if you compare commodities to the S&P 500 or any other uh, indices, um, there's a strong breakout now, so commodities do outperform because the broader market is, is having this correction. So finally, we see this, see this reversal to the mean in the commodity space. Why do you think we saw a crypto rally given the announcement of, uh, of uh, regulatory landscape changing here in the U.S.? Well, we've seen a correction in uh, the crypto space. Um, I think this could be um, um, done now, this correction. I think we could be on the verge of a very strong leg up, bringing Bitcoin to uh, over 100K quite soon. And of course, everybody is watching what the US will do. And uh, it, it, I think it was a uh, buy the rumor, sell the fact, because we went up the day before the announcement. During the, after the announcement, we, we went down with Bitcoin. But I think there's strong base building uh, under 40K. I will, I, I'm a buyer. Actually, I, I bought this week under 40K. So I think that's, that's the new entry level for, for me. Uh, 
I want to bring it back to how we started, Willem. Um, you know, if the Fed dollar is unstoppable, digital dollar is coming, there's no way around it. Uh, what happens if people don't want to use it? Would there be workarounds from it? Well, people always want to have money. They always want to have dollars. So um, as long as you don't have a total collapse in a hyperinflationary scenario, the dollar will always be around. And, and don't forget, the pound sterling used to be the world reserve currency. The pound is still there. It's no longer the world reserve currency, but it didn't went to zero. So I'm not predicting the dollar will collapse and go to zero, but you might might get or might be in need of a dollar devaluation, which means a gold revaluation. And that's actually what I predicted in the big reset. Uh, expect a dollar devaluation and a gold revaluation because this has helped the system in the 1930s as well. We covered uh, a lot of uh, points here, uh, Willem, important, important points. Um, I guess... Uh, one thing I want to bring up from our past interview, because I got so many emails that it resonated with what you were, you were talking about, kind of getting out of the banking system, how you really don't hold a lot of cash in the banking system. You know, we saw what happened in, in Canada. You know, your funds can be frozen. Um, can you just talk a little bit more about that? Have you, are you doing anything differently these days? Uh, when, when the war started, I woke up at 5 a.m. I looked at my iPhone and I was shocked to see this, this large invasion because nobody expected this. I expected a, sh a, a, a small military action. And then I thought, what should I do? Do I need to call somebody? It was 5 a.m. Nobody awake. I, uh, and then I you asked myself. Me. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Next time I call you. Um, and then um, I asked myself, should I switch on the computer and start trading or selling or buying? But then I, yeah. I thought, well, our portfolio, you know, was designed for crisis like this. We have 70%, 75% of our portfolio in precious metals related uh, equities. Uh, we have uranium and the rest. And actually, we didn't do anything. And now we're up 20% since the start of the invasion. So... If you're well prepared, and I think you've done a, an incredible job over the years uh, uh, to, to inform the audience that crisis can and will happen, and, and you might feel a little dumb, dumb uh, when you buy physical gold and you start to think about uh, prepping. But one day, you know, the people in Kiev never thought they would have to flee with just one bag. And I read reports by, from some of the refugees who, who couldn't take their, their silver holdings, but they took their Bitcoin ledger. And you know, the Bitcoin ledger is a cold storage device and you run and you put it in your pocket and you can, you can buy a house in Poland. So if you spread your portfolio, if you spread your assets and you have this diversification, I always say real estate, physical gold and silver, um, equity and, and some Bitcoin and cash, then you survive every crisis. And uh, I think the, the need for that kind of diversification is stronger than ever, stronger than ever. So well said, you never think it's going to happen until it does. Yeah. Willem, and don't, uh, be, don't be one hour late because once you wake up and you need to flee, you know, you can't... <laughs> You can't order your gold, gold or silver bar or whatever. Terrifying times. Uh, Willem Middlecope, author of The Big Reset. I urge everyone to get a copy of that book. Uh, Willem, uh, thank you, always. People thank you can so much. download it for free. Eh? Um, download The Big Reset for free at our website, Commodity Discovery Fund. Thank you so much, Daniela. And thank you all for watching. We'll have much more for you, so be sure to stay tuned to Stansbury Research. And don't forget to sign up for premier content at DanielaCombone.com. Thanks for watching. Opinions expressed on this program are solely those of the contributor and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of Stansbury Research, its parent company, or affiliates.